All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna have to go over the Z490 memory stability and all the problems that I had getting it to work on this platform. Um, we're gonna, we have a lot of testing to do today, so stay tuned and I'll tell you what we're gonna be doing. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. So what we're gonna be doing today is first let me let me just explain firstly what was going on with the build so i transferred over from z390 to z490 four sticks four sticks z390 is t topology z490 is daisy chain it's a massive difference but oddly somehow they did it so the total max speed that you can get on both platforms is uh, the same. So what I got on Z390 was 4133 C16. What I managed to get on this one was 4133 C16, all the same sub timings or anything. Um, this one took a lot more VCC IO and VCC SA. Uh, Z390, I was at 1.22 IO and 1.25 uh, SA. This one needed 1.3 SA and 1.27 IO, which is still more than safe and fine, but just switching to the daisy chain required an extra 0.5 um, voltage on both of those uh, values to just to get it to, just get it stable. That wasn't even the first problem I had. After I figured out that part and I got it to boot properly and stress test for a little bit, the stress test would always fail after like 10 minutes. So I would do stock uh, core temps or voltages, stock everything, and I would only try the memory and I could not get it stable. So what ended up happening, um, this took me days to figure out. What ended up happening was this motherboard, the um, Z490 Hero, the Asus one, doesn't have a backplate, which at the time I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. The backplate's pretty cool, but whatever, I don't care. Asus likes to cut a lot of corners on their shit. The Gigabyte Z390 ARS Master had a backplate. So what I didn't realize at the time was the backplate actually absorbs quite a bit of heat away from the PCB behind the RAM slots. So every so when I was stress testing my RAM, um, I would put my hand and touch it, and it would actually burn my hand. I like uh, it, like I couldn't keep my hand on it for too long, and I was like, "Holy crap! Why is the RAM getting so hot? It never got that hot on the Z390 at the same 1.5 volts." So I was like, what the hell is going on here? And then half of it, I would say half of it is the backplate and half of it was the sheer power consumption of those 10 cores. So the heat from the CPU is going into the PCB and going into the RAM slots. And if you actually touch the back of the, of the PCB under load after 10 minutes, it was scorching hot. Like the backplate on the on the AORS Master made a massive difference. So I'm I'm not sure if you can see it. Oh yeah, you can here. All I did was I added the mother the VRM fan here that can, that comes with the Hero motherboard, and I just slipped it right on top of the RAM like that. All my problems went away. All literally all the issues. So then I w when I was stress testing um, my RAM, the temperatures would go up to about 56, 57 uh, reading and hardware info on all the RAM slots. And then when I added the fan, it dropped down to about 46, 47. So I dropped about 10 degrees of RAM temperature just adding that fan. And unfortunately, I don't have any data of what the RAM temperatures were on the on the AORS Master because I never had that problem in the first place. Like I never I never had a RAM stability issue on that platform. So, what we're going to test today, just because this is for I'm just curious as hell, 
And if anyone else had this issue, I know Buildzoid got his to 4266, but he also needed a fan. That's what kind of gave me the idea. He literally just released that video, like, not too long ago. So, uh, what we're going to be testing today, I'm going to do a one-hour stress test without the uh, VRM fan. Everything just normal, closed case, etc., etc., all that airflow. Then the second test that we're going to do... I'm going to put the VRM fan there. Same thing, do it for an hour, see what's up. Third test that we're going to do, I am going to put a fan on... I can't, I can't turn the case around now, but every case has an opening behind the CPU, so you can put your CPU cooler bracket there. You, if you, you probably know what I'm talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a one-hour test with a 120 millimeter fan blowing at the back of the CPU socket. Since there's no back plate anymore, can you re kind of replace the back plate's job by just blowing a 120 mil fan at the back of the PCB? It's like an old overclocker check, but we haven't had to do that forever. So I want to know if having a 120 mil fan on the back of your PCB is enough to cool the PCB so the heat from the CPU doesn't transfer over to your RAM sticks and just instability the hell out of it. So, that is what we're going to be doing today. My kitty. My good kitty. And, yes, that's my cat, people. She's adorable. And one last thing I'm going to test. I'm going to test the VRM. Ah, fuck. Then... Let's say I get the temperatures down X amount or whatever. Can we get more frequency or timings out of it if the temperature is lower? I'll try that too. I don't know if that's even possible, but that's what we're here for. All right, frame chasers, let's get a test in and I will come back with the results. All right, guys, I've got the results here. I'm going to post the pictures up for you and go over them quickly. Um, so the first picture I'm going to put up here is the RAM stability at one hour, OCCT, uh, no fans at all, just case fans. And what we got here is we got 55.3 degrees on the hottest RAM chip, DIM2 here. So let's say 55.5. And on the next picture here is just that tiny VRM fan that came with the motherboard that I slipped over top of the RAM. Uh, we got the hottest uh, chips at 49 degrees. So that was a six and a half degree drop just putting that little fan over top of the RAM chips. Uh, so yeah, I guess six degrees was enough to make it go from instable or unstable to stable, right? And the next picture that we got here is just the 120 mil fan on the back of the motherboard on the CPU socket, which is about 45.8 degrees was the hottest. So what is that? 45.8. That's actually, so yeah, that's another, what, four degree drop over just the VRM fan. So if you had to make a choice between having a fan on the back of the CPU socket versus the VRM fan, the back of the CPU socket actually drops the temperature by 10 total degrees. That's insane. Which, which actually tells you that all of that heat is actually coming from that CPU. Um, the 10 core just draws too much damn power and heats up everything around it. So... Actually, if you look at the if you look at the temperature, you notice that the VRM temperature is 55 degrees with the back with the fan on the back. And with the VRM fan on the RAM, it's actually 64. So we dropped 9 degrees there on the actual on the actual motherboard VRM just having that fan back there. That's insane. I did not think that would be that huge. Note to self, put a fan on the back of the motherboard in every build from now on. Holy shit. The final result we have here is uh, the 120 mil fan on the back of the motherboard and the VRM fan on top of the RAM sticks. 
and it dropped to 41.8 degrees on the RAM. That's that's a total of what 14 degrees? Yep, four, 14 degrees total drop if you add both of those on the RAM sticks. And the VRM, yeah, same as before, so 54 degrees. That's insane. That is totally worth it. Bare, like bare, best bang for a buck, I guess you could say, would be the 120 mil fan on the back. The VRM fan just drops it by an extra 5 degrees for good measure. So, so on that note, I also... Couldn't get it to go any faster as well. Even though we dropped the RAM temperature by 15 degrees, I couldn't get it to post on a higher megahertz whatsoever or lower timings. The, the, it seems like the... Um, and I wasn't willing to go above 1.5 volts on my RAM just for longevity's sake. So it seems that like 45 degrees is kind of the sweet spot for Samsung b -Dye. I mean, in terms of 1.5 volt overclock stability, going lower temperature than that doesn't really, uh, I mean, I guess I could bump the voltage up more, but I'm just, I don't, the gains are so marginal now that it's not worth it. So those are the results. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you learned something today. Um, if you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing. Hopefully today is the day I earned your subscription. And like, share, comment, do all that good YouTube uh, SEO stuff for me. Once I get to 100 subscribers, I'll probably do a small giveaway for the first 100 people because it means a lot to me. And I think now that my personal rig is finished, we're going to go back to doing some rise and overclock stuff on that old build that I did that I kind of just got left hanging there. But uh, that's on the schedule next, and I hope you guys join me next time on Frame Chasers, and see you later.